One of the decisions that I had to make when building this engine is what to do about my accessories and my pulley drive system. Uh, so my 289 uh, began its life in a 64 Falcon. Uh, and so back then it had a V-belt system. I uh, had a small, uh, I believe 60 amp alternator with a single V-belt that uh, spun off the crank, the water pump and rotated the alternator. Um, had a second pulley if there was power steering and I believe a third for air conditioning if that was an option. Um, maybe not in, in that particular car but in, in Fairlanes or Thunderbirds or whatever else might have had a 289. I don't think the Thunderbirds did. Anyway, could be wrong. My Mustang itself is a 78 um, very similar setup, uh, virtually unchanged. The AC compressor was a little bit different by the 70s. Um, the alternator was still, I believe, only 65 amps-ish. Um, and V-belt setup, multiple belts. Um, I wanted to look at a serpentine setup. Um, and so I started looking at them. A lot of them are relatively straightforward, easy to install retrofit kits based mostly off of the Fox Body Mustang serpentine belt setup. Um, but one of the things I didn't like is that they require me to either use the mid 80s ish accessories or adapt my 60s or 70s era accessories to the serpentine kit. Um, and one of the things that I really wanted to do was upgrade to the latest generation. I'm building this this uh, project from scratch. Um, might as well use the latest in technology. And so my search brought me to a company called CVF Racing. They make a retrofit kit. They make a number of different kits. They do make some Fox Body style serpentine kits, but uh, their own um, sort of flagship kit, uh, they call it, I think, the Raptor with a WR. Um, uh, kit. Um, it includes an 8 rib serpentine belt setup, uh, but it also allows you the opportunity to upgrade to the most modern components. So my alternator goes from a 65 amp alternator to a hundred and four and and that 65 amp alternator would have required an external voltage regulator. Uh, from that I go to 140 amp one wire alternator, um, which not only makes installation uh, easier, but gives me the upgrade to my electrical system that I desire. Um, my um, power steering system, um, I was going to have to upgrade that anyway because I upgraded my brakes to Hydro Boost, and so that puts substantial higher demand on the power steering pump, the stock 70s era power steering pump. There's no way it would be able to, to, to support that. Uh, and so CVF gave me the opportunity to upgrade to essentially what's a, what is a hydraulic pump capable of supplying uh, fluid under pressure both to the power steering system and to the hydro boost braking system. And then um, for the air conditioning, uh, I do live in Florida. Uh, fortunately, the Mustang that I, I bought happened to be one of the few Mustang twos with factory AC. Most of them didn't have AC at all. Um, most of the ones that did have AC, it was a dealer installed AC unit. Um, so the uh, factory AC cars are kind of low in numbers, certainly not valuable by any means, but um, I got lucky and happened to have one. I live in Florida, so I was going to put AC in regardless, but uh, not having to use an under dash unit, having it all built in was a, a big plus to me, so um, I, I look for opportunities to upgrade that. And, um, and so the CVF kit allows me to use the latest generation uh, GM peanut style compressor. Um, and so uh, not only do I have a neatly installed package, but it's one that uses the latest generation of components. So I'm going to show you what it looks like here. And so the kit is very tightly packaged. It 
is entirely supported by one bracket. Uh, these two sort of horns that go across the front here are mounted to the front of the engine. There are four fasteners. There's one down here right below this idler pulley. There's one behind it and then there's one behind each of these. Those bolts go through the water pump then through the timing cover and directly into the engine block and they support that large plate. And then the three accessories, this is the alternator, power steering pump, and AC compressor over here are all mounted to this single bracket. Uh, along with the three idler pulleys and the single tensioner pulley. Um, it has an adapter uh, behind the crank pulley and uh, so the harmonic balancer, I'm going to zoom in, it's pretty far back there. You can see the super damper logo. It's pretty far back. There's a spacer that puts the crank pulley uh, further out so that it's in line with the rest of the accessories. Um, so got a single tensioner here and then the belt goes around the AC compressor, around the idler, over the water pump, around another idler, around the alternator, around the power steering pump, around the third idler, around the crank and back to the idler. Uh, and it is a single eight rib belt nice and wide um, and uh, plenty plenty strong uh, most of your stock belts are six rib and so the other uh, cool thing about it is because the accessories are mounted to the plate and it's a thick billet aluminum plate very very strong it means there are no rear brackets for the accessory normally for an alternator for instance you'd have a front bracket for the pulley um, or where the pulley is and then you'd have a rear bracket attaching it to the head in this case it's only attached to the front plate with two bolts, one here and one on the bottom. There's a special adapter plate for the power steering pump and then the AC compressor, same thing. It has two bolts on opposite sides. It's fixed in position uh, because the only movement that you need is the idler uh, or the, uh, the tensioner when you're installing and removing the belt. But standing back here, it is just about as wide as the engine itself, maybe a touch wider. Um, well, not really. It looks like the oil filter sticks out further on the driver's side. Um, and so the AC compressor and the tensioner are just a hair wider than the valve cover on the passenger side. So it is extremely compact left to right. Uh, it is uh, lower than the valve covers. Um, and you know some that's some of the fox body kits have the alternator way up in the air here or the power steering pump on this side way up in the air uh, this one's got them nice and and tight and uh, the entire kit sticking out from the front of the engine uh, is also very tight and compact it doesn't stick out very far at all um, and one of the important things to me about having nothing behind the accessories is um, my 289, uh, again it is a 289 and it's a 64 289, which means my timing mark is at about um, this position on the crank pulley. Looking at it from the front with a Ford, there's really three positions that you could possibly find the timing mark. One is up about here, um, one is down about here, and the other is on, on this side. Um, certainly with a setup like this, it's intended for you to be using it on one of the later engines that has a timing mark over here. Um, I could have gone through the trouble of trying to remark my balancer, um, but it's an ATI, ATI super damper. It's beautifully etched. It's got the numbers right on it. I wanted to be able to use them. Um, and trying to use stock bracketry to do this was making that a problem. However, I'm going to stick a flashlight down in here and sort of illuminate this. I'm going to zoom in 
with the camera. Try to anyway. There it is. And there's my timing mark right there. Right in the center of the picture. You can see the hash marks. Um, it is right on top dead center. Let me move the flashlight and see if I can get it to... So you can see... Might not be able to make it out because the line is halfway covering the, the letters. TDC. Now, I just made it worse. Okay. So, um, the point is, I can see that mark from way back here. It's a small hole, and you got to be looking at it at the correct angle. But um, I can see my timing mark with this kit installed, and I've already checked the angle from the car. I can easily see this standing next to the car and looking over the fender. So I'll be able to set my timing easily using the marks that are already etched into the ATI Super Damper and without having to change anything about the basic configuration of this 289 engine. I did have one clearance issue over here. Um, the um, fuel pump was closer than I liked it to be to the power steering pump. Uh, however, this casting boss on the fuel pump serves no real purpose and so the the portion of it that went forward from here which is what was too close to the pump uh, i simply ground that off and that gave me all the clearance i needed uh, i'm only running the mechanical fuel pump for the engine break-in um, once it's in the car and i put my fuel injection system on i'll be using the electric pump but uh, for the break-in i'm going to use a mechanical pump and so that was um, uh, necessary clearance there. Um, other than that, everything else fits absolutely beautifully. Uh, this is the stock lower radiator hose uh, for uh, my Mustang. This is the stock upper radiator hose. Of course, that comes off the intake. Um, but uh, <coughs> the uh, lower radiator hose, even that, um, you know, I, I wanted to be able to keep my stop ti stock timing mark but I also wanted to be able to use the water pump and radiator hose appropriate to my car. So the my 289 originally would have had a passenger side lower radiator hose, um, but I went with the driver side to make it easier to package in the car and with this pulley kit, um, but I was able to do that and still be able to see the timing mark. Um, once the fuel injection is installed, I'm, it's really not going to be that much of an issue other than setting initial timing. I won't need to, to mess with the timing at all. The computer will handle all of that. But certainly initially for the break-in, you know, I've got my MSD distributor on here and I'll need to set the timing and uh, um, make sure it's set correctly for the break-in. Um, they have a number of different finishes for this kit. Um, this particular one is polished aluminum. Um, I paid a couple hundred extra and had the ceramic coating applied. So it's a little, um, it, it's a little extra, but it'll keep it sort of shiny without you having to polish it all the time, which would be uh, tedious. Um, one of the uh, things that uh, you'll have to deal with in the future is if you ever want to turn the crank by hand uh, or with a tool, uh, there's a cover for the center plate. So you have to pull three screws and get that cover off so you can get to the crank bolt. And the crank bolt is pretty far back in there because as I mentioned earlier, the pulley is spaced out. And then in order to get a tool on the tensioner, you've got to remove this cover with these two screws. Um, but uh, overall, um, the kit installed easily uh, and it looks beautiful. Uh, the only real uh, problem that I have, and I won't even call it a problem, uh, is that the belt that they supplied with the kit was a little bit too short. Um, and probably because um, of the water pump, I'm sorry, the power steering pump. Um, the normal power steering pump on the kit is a GM uh, a basic stock GM power steering pump uh, and uh, when you install the um, upgraded pump 
the hydro boost pump it has a little adapter bracket that goes on it and I think that changes the position slightly um, the the belt that they gave me I was able to put it on um, but uh, I had to loosen up some of the accessories in order to do that with the tensioner at its uh, most uh, loosened uh, position I wasn't able to just put the belt on like you should be able to do with the serpentine setup uh, but uh, I went out and bought a belt that I think is only one inch longer could be an inch and a half longer um, and that works beautifully uh, I can simply um, loosen the tensioner pop the belt off a pulley and take it off just like you would on any modern car and then putting it on, of course, is just as easy. So if you're in the market for a serpentine setup and you're, you're, you're looking for something that will do everything for you, um, look beautiful, tightly package everything, and allow you to upgrade to the most modern accessories, um, I can't recommend highly enough this CVR racing kit. Of course, I say that now. We'll see how it performs once it's in the car, um, and, and I'll do a follow-up uh, in the future at some point. Uh, but based on feedback uh, from other people who I've talked to that are currently running this setup, uh, they couldn't be happier. So I'm hoping uh, that'll, be the, uh, that'll be the conclusion for me as well. So, uh, if you have any uh, further questions about this kit, about uh, installation of the kit, or about options, um, anything you want to know, I I'm not an expert. I don't work for CBR. They're not paying me. Uh, but I'll certainly be happy to tell you about my experience with it and answer any questions that you might have.